I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I will be reviewing book number two in James S.A. Corey's science fiction space opera epic series, The Expanse. As you know, James S.A. Corey is the pseudonym for two writers named uh, Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham. And they collaborated to write what I think is probably going to be one of the classic science fiction series of all time. Now, normally I don't like collaborations. I like one author, one story. I don't like when two authors team up to do a story. Don't like it. With the exception of a few things, and one of those exceptions is James S.A. Corey, The Expanse. I think it's great. I think it's great. Let's talk about number two. If you want to see my previous review of book number one, Leviathan Wakes, I will link to that up top towards the end of this video. But right now, let's talk about Caliban's War. It came out in about 2012. Um, and just to note, for those of you that don't know, The Expanse, which is the name of the series, has also been filmed as a TV miniseries. Uh, let's see, I think that the Sci-Fi Channel did the first three seasons, and now I think Amazon.com is uh, filming the remainder of the series, which is great, because the, the series uh, that's, that they put on uh, TV it was, it follows the story pretty closely that's in the books, which is, you know, which is rare, which means that it's, it's a good thing, because you, you can read the books first, and then you can watch the series, and everybody wins. Everybody wins, even me. Somehow I win. Let's talk about Caliban's War, book number two. You know, it starts out as book number one did with a kidnapping of a young girl and sort of the search for a kidnap victim. At the same time, we have the Martian Marine, the Martian Space Marines being slaughtered by a super soldier that nobody knows what it is. And in fact, it's such a deadly killer and kills so quickly and can't be killed itself no matter how hard they try that people begin to think that it's maybe some sort of alien technology the expanse universe takes place not in the universe but it's more local it's not even in our it's it's you know it's not out in the universe it's it's in our galaxy not only is it just in our galaxy but it's within our it t the whole thing takes place within our own solar system where mars has been colonized and 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 uh the asteroid belt has been colonized and all the planets are being um you know run by different factions and different uh political groups and so this space marine slaughter takes place and the un yeah, t parts of this take place on Earth with the UN. The UN is wondering um, what happened to this Space Marine Force and how did, were they so easily slaughtered? Well, there's one survivor of the slaughter named Bobby Draper, and she has to go stand in front of the UN and answer to the UN about how her crew was so easily killed and what's going on. And of course, the UN, as the UN always does, even in our day and age, they're just they're not full of a lot of great people. They're just political political assholes and in this book they are kind of too because they want to know what this um super soldier is and they want to you know of course of course they want it for themselves right and so in come our heroes the crew of the risonante or the riconante or the rocky as it's called i don't know how to pronounce it but in come our heroes the crew of the riconante to save the day to solve the mysteries to figure things out we've got captain holden We've got Naomi, we've got Amos, we've got Alex, the crew of the Riconante, and they get involved in all this political intrigue. Not only that, but you'll remember Detective Miller from book one. He makes a return. Minor spoiler alert, but I think everybody kind of maybe figured he would. He returns in a mysterious way. I will not divulge how he returns to the story. I do spoiler-free, mostly spoiler-free reviews on this channel. Uh, but Detective Miller, my favorite character, he comes back after harrowing experiences in book one. He comes back for book two. And off on the space opera adventure we go with that buildup. Uh, I won't take too much of your time going over much more of the plot because I believe you exploring the story all on your own is 99% of the fun. I don't want to get into too many plot details 
so you can discover them on your own. But let's just say that the super soldier stows away on our hero's spaceship, the Riconante, and, you know, towards the end of the book, the there's a mystery on Venus that's kind of tied to perhaps alien something else out there in the universe. You know, so far we're just within our own solar system in this expanse story. But now we've got a mystery on Venus that hints of alien life out there in the universe that is undiscovered. And that's kind of where this se the uh, series leads us to. It's, you know, it is called The Expanse. We are expanding. And book number two, book number one hints at it. Book number two hints at it a little bit more. There's a mystery on Venus. There's an alien super soldier. And a lot of space opera. If you love Star Wars and Star Trek... If you love just good writing, because these guys write a good story, you got to start reading The Expanse. So that's my review of book number two. Book number one was fantastic. I rated it pretty high. Book number two, still good, still really, really great. Uh, not quite did I like it as much as book one. So I will give this a solid eight out of ten for Caliban's War. Book number two of The Expanse. I've got it right here. I've got them all in hardcover right here. Caliban's War. Go out and get it if you want to read a great science fiction story.